Human IK is designed to expand a character's existing set of motions at runtime by dynamically controlling the character's skeleton using full body IK and retargeting solvers. Before you can access the Human IK libraries in your game engine, you first need to integrate Human IK into the engine. Once this is done, you're ready to use Human IK programmatically. In this movie, we'll cover the first phase required to use Human IK at runtime initialization. The initialization phase sets up the character you intend to control with Human IK. There are four basic steps. 1. Creating an HIK character object to represent the Human IK enabled character, also known as the characterization process. 2. Creating an HIK character state object, which stores your character's pose based on the translation and rotation of each joint in its Human IK skeletal hierarchy. 3. Creating an HIK property set state object to configure how the Human IK solvers will handle your character. And 4. Creating an HIK effector set state object, which sets the target points for each of the character's body parts, as well as a set of corresponding constraints. Let's go over each step to better understand how they work together. First, you must create an HIK character object. Each instance of the HIK character class represents a Human IK enabled character in the code. The class itself contains everything Human IK needs to understand your character's skeleton structure and geometry so that it can be controlled at runtime. You create the HIK character through a process called characterization, which defines the following. A mapping between each joint in your character's skeleton and its corresponding node in the Human IK biomechanical model, and the translation rotation, and scale values for each joint that defines your character's default pose, also referred to as a T-stance. This means that whether your character has a standard humanoid skeleton structure or exaggerated proportions, the HIK character stores this data and passes it to the Human IK solvers so it can control your character regardless of these differences. In addition, the HIK character object can include other optional values like degrees of freedom and parent offsets for each joint. We'll skip these for this basic initialization. Since they are not mandatory, omitting them will not affect the final result. In order to create an HIK character, you must first create an instance of the HIK character definition class. The HIK character definition acts as a blueprint that identifies a set of HIK node IDs corresponding to the joints used in your character. Those Human IK node IDs are stored in an MUSED nodes array for easy access. The HIK character definition must contain at least the 15 nodes required by Human IK. These required nodes correspond to the main joints in your character's skeleton and are essential to complete the characterization. The other nodes in the Human IK hierarchy, such as fingers, toes, and roll nodes, are optional and do not affect the characterization to the same degree. For example, roll nodes provide better twisting deformation in your character's arms and legs, but are not strictly necessary to build a working skeleton. In some cases, you may notice some differences in naming convention between your skeleton joints and the corresponding Human IK node IDs. This is normal because the Human IK API names each node based on the joint it represents, as opposed to the bone that extends from that joint. To create an HIK character based on the HIK character definition, you need to call the HIK character create function with the following arguments a pointer to HIK character definition, a pointer to the callback function that will allocate memory for the HIK character and the custom identification string and customer key values both included in your Human IK runtime license file. Note that if you already copied these license values in the Autodesk MWKey.h file when you first integrated Human IK into your game engine, you can simply include that file and use the predefined values Autodesk Customer String and Autodesk Customer Key. We now have an HIK character object containing all the human IK nodes that we'll use to control our character. 
However, we still need to set translation, rotation, and scale values for each of these joints in order to match the required T stance. To set default transform values, call the HIK set characterize node state TQSFV function for each character node. This function requires three separate arrays of four floating point numbers as arguments, representing the translation, quaternion rotation, and scale values of the current node in global space. Alternatively, you can call the HIK set characterize node state FV function that uses a 4x4 transform matrix instead of arrays. Finally, call the HIK characterize geometry function to complete the characterization. Your HIK character is now ready for the next steps in the initialization process. Depending on your production pipeline, the characterization we just covered programmatically can also be done visually by an artist. For example, using Maya, Softimage, or the standalone characterization tool available with the HumanIK SDK, an artist can pre-generate a characterization that is ready for you to use. This characterization is saved as a binary .hikc file containing the information needed to create a new HIK character object. In addition, a .bones.xml file is created, which contains the bone correspondence between each character joint and the matching human IK node. To create an HIK character from the .hikc characterization file, you must first load it into memory using the file management interface of your project. Then, create a new instance of the HIK character definition class and call the HIK read from stream function to create a new HIK character. This function requires most of the same arguments as the HIK character create definition function we've just seen earlier. These arguments include pointers to the HIK character definition, memory allocation functions, and your license key. Finally, close the file stream. You now have an HIK character generated from an external characterization file. The second step in the initialization process is to create an HIK character state object. The HIK character state contains the translation and rotation matrix for each of your character's nodes. Think of it as taking a snapshot of your character's pose at the current frame. The human IK solvers actually use the HIK character state twice at runtime, once as input to providing a starting pose for the IK calculations, and again as output when the solvers complete their calculations. We'll cover this more extensively in the next movies. To create the HIK character state, call the HIK character state create function with pointers to your HIK character and to a memory allocation callback function as arguments. Next, you need to create an HIK property set state object to define a set of optional attributes related to how the HIK solvers handle your HIK character. This includes properties such as floor contacts, joint mirroring options, spine stiffness, and so on. Call the HIK property set state create function to create it with only a memory allocation callback function as an argument. Note that this solver property object does not directly serve as a specific HIK character or HIK character definition. This is because HIK property set state contains the same properties for all HIK character instances. Finally, create an HIK effector set state object to store transform and constraints information related to the effectors. Effectors are essentially target points in space for each of your character's body parts. At every frame, the human IK solver looks at where these effectors are and then controls the character's body parts to match them. The HIK effector set state object contains the effector's position and rotation values, as well as their set of reach, pull, and resist constraints. These constraints control how strongly the final generated pose should attempt to reach each effector. The HIK effector set state also defines which body part the human IK solver chooses to control. Call the HIK effector set state create function to create it with only a memory allocation callback function as an argument. You've now fully initialized your character for human IK. 
Repeat this process once at runtime for every character you plan to control with the HIK solvers. Also, you'll probably want to maintain this set of human IK objects within class members of your game character class, so that they can be easily accessed when evaluating that character's pose at each frame. In the next movie, we'll go over the HIK solving process that updates your character's skeleton at runtime.